<sighs> no, my bench isn't always that dirty. I've tidied it up. I finished the job, good. So this is a very brief coda to last week's um, electrical part two. Um, I've finished the job, right? So I've got the, um, I've hooked up to this load output on the 12 volt, just so it's exercising a little bit, a fast charger for my phone, so I've got a phone charging point out here. Um, I tried to hook up an inverter, I've got a little plug-in 150 watt inverter, and it, the, the load output doesn't like it. It doesn't also like, it doesn't like any inverter, even though it says in the instructions you can put an inverter on it. You, I, I can't, at least I don't think you can. Uh, good, right. Um, well, I've just covered for UV. Because that automotive cable I'm using for the power cable isn't UV stable, I don't think. So it's all wrapped, installed, um, de-tripped, and in shadow there, and in the plastic tubes, it runs out to the out to the outside. Um, and I've put these 12 volt panels back on, and they're really rocket lolly, celebrating uh, Bob and Doug successfully arriving at the space station. Hurrah! Anyway, uh, um, they're much better in a... I was using them on a 24 volt setup, so I had to have them in series. So one ran into the other to make 24 volts out of two 12 volt panels. If you just stick them both in next to each other in the 12 volt system, so each one is independently feeding the MPPT, they're much more resistant to shading. Much more resistant. So. You know, shading them like that much, and even more than that, only takes half of the output off. So I get a sort of a consistent amp, uh, sort of, I mean, basically, no matter how much they're shaded. So, uh, good, that's done. That's done. It's really done. So, and again, uh, I think it's going to cool down a little bit. So, that's probably a bit better for painting. But uh, let's go and get on with that. I'm a bit tempted to maybe fill that in and put the vent somewhere else because uh, it was it was mirrored on this side with a vent over here, but that's going to be the chimney. Um, and if this is going to be uh, electronics over here, I don't really especially want um, a vent right above that. Right, I'm actually going to do this today. Um, I wasn't expecting to, but this is the outside of the vent hole. Um, and you see it's sort of set in. This is lower than this. So I'll just grind this part. We can put some new glass fibre in, just in the lower part, to try and get it to sort of smooth across. Not that I'm terribly worried about the surface finish, but that's what I'll do. So I'll just try to do that. Um, I'll mark it with a bit of plastic. Um, and I'll give it a grind. I don't want to damage the passers by. Okay, that's not bad. Um, I've feathered it, feathered it in towards the centre so I can get three pieces of the glass across the top. And I've cleaned up the edge, so the next thing to do is to bond a piece of foam in. You see the foam doesn't go quite to the edge, actually it's hard edge, but the foam is just a bit exposed, just a bit back from the edge, so um, grind it off inside and get a bit of foam in there, and then we can carry on inside. Good, and I've got the, got the inside done as well, so I'm happy with that. That's Monday, so we'll get done tomorrow. Uh, right, tomorrow it's today, Tuesday. Um, got a bit of this green foam. I've put it on the and drawn around it. So I've cut a piece of this out so it jams in the hole. Uh, do some more grinding. And when I've got the epoxy out, I'll stick this in um, and let it go off. 
and then do some sanding to get it into shape. Uh, right, it, it cuts quite well actually, this foam. Um, I've just been around the stunning knife. Um, I've put a bit of a chamfer, so the top is a bit bigger than the bottom. So it's just jamming like a bung. Bung. Very good. did all that. It's all done now. All those patches all the way around. Um, and what I did do, so let's carry on with this, is um, I jammed in the piece of foam. Um, and peel ply on there. So I jammed it in, it's a bit, it's a very little bit proud. Um, but also what I want to do with that is just, hopefully it's held in, it's held with epoxy. Hopefully it's held in strongly enough to be able to take a sanding. Um, sand it flat to the, um, so it's really nice and flat with the, um, the, the other side of the deck that is really uh, the cabin top um, and then get some glass fibre on here um, and then once I've got some glass fibre on here that will be then strong because uh, you can imagine above this it's you know it's, it's about five millimeter probably proud of the um, cabin top uh, so that will be sanding through and down um, to make that flat but it should be completely strong once this is done underneath so as long as it doesn't fall out whilst I sand it um, get some glass fibre on there, good, good, getting somewhere now, good. Uh, right, good, ah, okay, um, right, I've just been over the uh, repair then, end of the day, um, with a 40 grit, that is, um, an old 40 grit disc and uh, just concentrating on the edges so we can see that it's quite flush now and that the edge is composed of the foam exposed of the deck the deck core material and then i filled the hole with the replacement foam material but all around that is the glass fiber of the deck so as far as we'll come in epoxy over I'll be fixing epoxy to the glass fibre and right across the cores of the deck now and then build that up um, and then after that when that's gone off it'll be strong enough to do some good sanding. It's a Gurit PVC foam that I'm using. Uh, it sounds really beautifully um, and sticks very strongly actually. There's no hint of this being weak at all but it being epoxy to the original foam core of the deck. Um, so that's going pretty well. Good. Um, good. Right. Well, it's just the end of the... God, it was hot in here yesterday. <laughs> it was so hot. Uh, right, well, there are no lights, silly boy. But anyway, so I put the glass on there yesterday. So that's all gone off good and hard now. So let's go and have a look outside. Right, on top of the roof then, so you see, we've got the foam sticking up through, and that's all epoxied in strongly, and it's epoxied underneath, and then I've squeezed up through the holes, little sausages, so they're filled up. So I'll just take the tops of those little sausages off, and then sand down through the foam, which should be quite easy, and they'll be ready to epoxy over the top, and they'll be done. Good. Right, well I hope that's clear then, what has just happened. I've used the orbital sander then, just to flatten that flush with the roof. 
a closer look. Got a bit of a gap. Bit of a gap um, around. So I just put some. Uh, let's turn that edge out a little bit. So they're still around there. I guess some epoxy on top, uh, get some fiberglass on top, might be done. Good. Good.
Okay. Not quite um, epoxy best practice. Um, I should probably have left a uh, put on a bonding coat uh, first and let that go tacky according to that man in West System epoxy videos but they are just smashed in through it so uh, good that's all finished uh, so I'll have a look at that I've not uh, seen that technique used before by anybody else um, we'll see if it works out <clears throat> I'll stand on it in a couple of days and see if it takes my weight don't see why it shouldn't be really quite strong you know six layers of epoxy uh, glass fiber biaxial glass it's about a millimeter and a half each side which is I think thicker than the deck build up as it is uh, good <laughs> it's so lovely to do epoxy the right way up <laughs> not over your head <laughs> in a corner underneath a thing and round the corner in a box in a locker it's great right that's how epoxy can be lovely I mean if it was like that all the time I'd love it it would be fine no problem at all it's not like that all the time it's good Shower.